Why are humans not deer? A question that's plagued my mind for a long time. It's really an interesting question, honestly. And I think the implications of the answer might cause you to think more deeply than you might have initially wanted. But that has nothing to do with this. Welcome back to Tavern Talk, uh, episode 7, I think. Yeah, I'm done. Let's just go. I saw they did finally decide to uh, change the the quest system. So if I end up making one, it'll be different. Oh, hello. They've returned. Holy shit, I'm, I'm at a whole new perspective of my tavern. I've never seen this pole before. Good morning. Good morning, Melly. Good morning, Blaze. Is he still going by Blaze? What have you both been up to today? Oh, you know, dilly-dallying and such. I was not dilly-dallying. He was. It goes well with the brooding. Sounds like a wonderful morning. I, I like this duo. This is charming. Can I offer you both something to drink in these early hours? Yes, please. Can you make me something smart and sparkly? Can do. Okay, she wants a smart drink. Easiest, easiest drink of my life. A fresh brew of smart sparkles. Thank you. This is just the right amount of sparkles. Happy to hear that. Blaze, what do you want? Nothing. Alright. So has the cape found its way back home yet? Yes. The vampire was thankful, if melancholic. It seems to have awakened memories of old woe. He seemed pretty excited to me. He should be. It fits him well. Almost like it was tailor-made for him. It was very interesting seeing a vampire in person. His fangs were shorter than I thought they'd be. I expected them to be the size of a colossal saber-toothed tiger's fangs, but they were much tinier. A common misconception. Where'd you find them? At the local Gaia temple. It got split in the middle by a falling star. That sounds morbidly interesting. It was. I overheard some priests saying they, they're thinking about rebuilding the temple around it because it looks kind of cool and people like distinct temples. They do. Like the Taj, not a temple, never mind. The vampire was traveling with a really nice dwarf and a holy woman of Cassiopeia. They were asking around to see if the priest knew anything about the star rain. Did they? No, I could have told them that two days ago. But while we were sneaking around and listening in, we overheard the strangest conversation. Turns out that Lithia, that's the cleric's name, found out that one of the priests was actually a wobbling ooze in disguise. Scandalous. Not, not three cobalts in a trench coat. I know, right? But in the end, it was all okay. The others forgave him and he promised to try and become a real priest. Wow, what a, what a quest they had. Apparently, he really loves the humidity in the temple. They all hugged and everything. It was really very sweet. I was really happy we could see from the shadows. We? Oui. He, she, she's speaking French out here. Me and the mysterious and quiet Blaze. He's my new associate. I am no such thing. It's great to see you two working together so closely. You make a great duo. We are not a duo. Thank you. How did you find the right moment to give Kyle his cape? Between all those heightened emotions. We did it. She got caught. I thought one of the pillars would be big enough to hide behind, but it wasn't. It wasn't a pillar. It was a tall vase. It felt very well hidden when Elithia suddenly asked me if I wanted to stop hiding now. She was paying a lot of attention. I think she noticed me from the very beginning. She's so cool and smart. You know what, Melly? I think so too. I think everybody else around her are a bunch of degenerates. Blaze, you included, kinda, but you're alright, and Melly, you're alright. Did you ask her about the, her investigation? I did, but she said it was too early to share any insights. Even when I kept asking, she wouldn't budge. So I asked Master Smith Frostgrip to tell me more about the temple's architecture instead. Did you know that it was an altar built from a thousand-year-old oak? I didn't. That's fascinating. It is. She also told me I have to work on my stealth. 
And being small isn't going to be good enough. I think she knows from experience. Better not tell her that. Better not. Dwarves tend to wear heavy armor, so it doesn't help. So are you going to work on it? Yes. Liz is going to show me the ropes. Is he now? Have to. She'll get herself killed otherwise. That's a very dramatic way of looking at things. But probably true. Also very nice of you. So would you say your investigation was a success? Hmm. Kind of. We gotta see how clueless the other investigators are and return the cape to Mr. Vampire. But we didn't find out anything new about the stars. And I didn't even get to see any monsters. I was hoping maybe some would have fallen from the Astral Sea and I could have studied them. A dangerous, if very exciting dream. Mostly a foolish one. You think so? Have you met monsters before? What kinds? Do you have favorites? What are the first ones you ever met? Did they try to eat you or be your friend? Of course I've encountered monsters before. They've been part of my life for many years. But don't forget the monsters deep inside my soul. The shadows are full of them. Really? That's scary. Of course it is. So the first monsters you ever saw were shadow monsters? No. They were much more th worse than that. They're metaphorical monsters. What is it? Can I have that drink after all? The words aren't flowing easily. Of course, that's the same as last time? Yes. Let's, let's see if I can find something sweetly charismatic. I'm glad I said it because I did not remember. I'm gonna go with the spoken heart. This is not the same as last time, because I, I gave him the sunny one last time. I'm gonna save scum it, because I'm not fucking this up. A drink, just for you. Thanks. How is it? Fine. That means it's perfect. So, where was I? Alright, oh, shadow monsters. Back when I was younger, I just joined the Shadow Banes and was eager to prove myself. It said there are great riches far in the depths of the Gravel Mac, a dangerous mountain range in the eastern Fe. 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 So, uh, Sword Art Online. Hidden treasure troves full of precious gems and gold. And I owed some debts. Hoping to find some jewels, I made my way there. To the darkest of its crevices. Guarding its depths were creatures no one would ever choose to face. Bleak stalkers straight from the twilight chasm. Hideous creatures that have every right to be associated with a nightmare realm. They typically feed on rocks and gemstones, but they seem to think bones have the same general consistency. I wasn't able to harm them with my mortal weapons. So I distracted them with some of the gems I had managed to pocket earlier. It was a close call. I'll never forget their twisted antlers and beak-like snouts. They sound kind of cute. They were not cute. If you say so, maybe one day I'll encounter some. Pray you will never. No thanks. Oh, damn, they spent all morning here. Oh, hello. Care, Lynn. Fuck, it's been a while. I've, it has been a while since I've one played you, two played the game. Innkeep, hand me a drink, will you? Coming right up, Lynn. Any preferences? The usual. Something strong and powerful? Exactly. God, I, I, Lynn has such a wonderful smile. Like, genuinely. She gives off uh, Carlac vibes from like Baldur's Gate. Hold on. You have not finished your drink, but he has. It's been like hours. Ta-da, a drink. You have a messed up definition of strong. Wait, what? Did I fuck it up? Why'd you say that? That's the right drink, right? That's the strength drink. Okay, whatever. Strength lies in the eyes of the beholder. Yeah, and yours needs a prescription. Say and keep. 
Wait, did, did I actually fuck it up or something? Say, Innkeep, you got room in your neat little book full of recipes for one more drink? Sure, got one for me? You bet. It's what my baba used to drink back in the day. My adventure reminded me of it. Oh, okay. It was just a, a ploy to get me a new drink. Okay, ooh, that's a sick drink. So since you're in my tavern unharmed and in somewhat good spirits, I'm guessing you survived your encounter with the Wyvern Chimera. I did, obviously. Congratulations. You encountered a Chimera? Sure did. Live to tell the tale too. You were the Chimera. Both. Cool. Are you a beast slayer? I am. Though this time no beast was slain. I'm Carolyn. You? Oh, she, oh my god. These characters. Minus you. Melly, the greatest detective in the whole wide world. And this is my assistant. Your assistant got a name? <laughs> Fuck. Malachi. I see. So, Melly, you're interested in chimeras? I'm interested in everything. Chimeras especially. Hmm. If you like, I'll tell you, that sneaky innkeep, and your punk in crime over there, how to a smart one. Yes, please. I would love that. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, I changed this. What is your name? Was it Ever Zephyr? W or was that bullshit too? Well, alright. Strap in tight then. Our friendly innkeep here sent me on a quest to collect some saliva from the wyvern chimera in the quag mangrove. It's a key ingredient for vampire sunscreen. That makes sense. The issue is, the marshlands that chimeras hold from turf. There's no way I could outfight one in its own domain. So I went the route of trickery. My baba said all chimeras she encountered enjoyed some good subterfuge. She really ain't the brainy type, but I thought even if I failed, it might be entertaining enough to help me anyhow. Needed to pick a clever approach, of course. So I did the only reasonable thing to do in that situation. I talked to a mouse. A uh, mouse? A mouse. Found one local to the marshland. I offered him a bunch of cheese if he agreed to help me out. It was pretty easy to convince. Why a mouse? Everyone knows chimeras are afraid of mice, dummy. Exactly. I thought if it was scared, it might use its three brains less. So I dressed up the mouse in the best wizard regalia I could find and made myself invisible. Why'd you dress it up like a wizard? You can do that? Not usually, but the innkeeper's drinks come with great perks. They do indeed, though I do not recall granting you invisibility. Yeah, invisibility may might be too strong a word. But with the wits I got from your drink, I remembered something. Chimeras have a hard time discerning between different shades of green. Ooh, I think I know where this is going. Got quite the hand in camouflage, so I, I figured I'd put it to good use. I gathered some underbrush, sticks, and leaves, and made some glue from tree resin and spit. Spit? Spit? Everything holds together better with spit. Let me jolt that down. Sure thing, kiddo. So, I put all this into a cloak and camouflage, put some mud on my face, and was ready to go. So, dressed up in camouflage, the mouse and I, unseen, approached the chimera. It was resting near a muddy stream, and two of its heads were in deep discussion about the sanctity of canon compliance. What kind of heads did it have? Besides the dragon one, obviously. Classic lion and snakehead combo. Of course, all of them heard us approaching. First, they seemed so curious. But all three of them froze up when they saw the mouse. Little thing looked mighty tall with his improvised wizard hat. I stayed right behind him, making his footsteps sound heavy. My camouflage seemed to work. The different shades of green and brown made me blend into the marshy landscape. From close up, I could see the chimera trying to hide its fear as the mouse grew nearer. So I started the show. The mouse from me, same thing at, the po at that point, loudly announced that he was a great wizard, and he had come to collect spellcasting ingredients for his plain switching spell. He was prepared to fight, but he was willing to bargain if the chimera valued its life. To underline his great power and everything, I even made him float on my invisible hand. Luckily for me, the chimera was more than ready to take up the offer. Though it did briefly argue with itself on whether fleeing was a better option, the snake wanted to fight, but only until the mouse growled, or I growled. 
One and the same, really. So the great mouse mage stated his conditions in no uncertain terms. One bucket of saliva, and in return, he would leave the chimera in peace forever. Helped a lot that he could summon the bucket out of thin air. I briefly lost my sanity when there was more in-creature arguing, but finally the chimera agreed. It filled the bucket with plenty of saliva within a disturbingly quick time frame. Happy to have avoided any monumental violence, the mouse wizard on his bucket of valuable chimera saliva floated away, promising that he would keep his honorable word. What an incredible ruse. How did you speak to that mouse? You are not a mouse. Guess I got some of my Baba's brains and charms after all. More than some, it seems. Let's not to get too carried away. Once we were out of sight, I had to keep up my own end of the deal, of course. After getting out of my camouflage, I thanked the mouse and I gave him the enor enormous amount of cheese I had promised him. Wouldn't that much cheese be way too heavy for a single mouse to carry? Turns out, the mouse was actually a wizard after all. Had some sort of dimensional pocket he could store it all in. Okay. Fucking ridiculous, but okay. Disappeared with the cheese and just left its ridiculous hat with me. Bid me farewell before I could ask him why he hadn't said something sooner. About the whole wizard thing, you know? Ah, a typical mouse with a wizard hat, I see. I prefer detectives, personally. Me too. Afterwards, I thought I was in the clear. When suddenly, I felt something breathing heavy right behind me. When I turned around, I was looking right into the scaly eyes of a wyvern chimera. Scaly eyes. Eyes don't typically have scales. Apparently, it had wanted to know where the wizard would take his leave so it could move to a more secure spot. Thought I was about to be smoke. But apparently Bubba was right. They do like a good ruse. So I wasn't mad? No. It was amused. Impressed, even. In return for making its weak, it let me live and left me with some strange words. Strange words? Stranger than a talking dragon head. I mean, that's kind of what dragon heads do, right? Not sure. Maybe they do typically speak in prophecies. Prophecies? That's what it said it was giving me. It said, Hope will fall and hope will arise. A hero will tether its final thread, burying the past and keeping the dead. It sounded like a bunch of... Fuck to me. How blasphemous. Didn't say it wasn't real. But why do they gotta make this, this thing so cryptic? Ain't no one got time to interpret this kind of stuff. Oh, Lin. Clearly you did not pay enough attention in, uh, fucking, uh, literature? Literature class? That's the thing with prophecies. No need to interpret them. You'll realize exactly what they mean soon enough. What hero do you think he was talking about? No clue. I bet it's you. Ain't no hero. I think you might be, Lin. Lin, you're my hero. You know what would be very heroic of you? Ordering more drinks. What? If you brought the saliva to Kyle the Vampire, I'm sure his happiness about finally being able to walk in the sun again will be extraordinary. Too lazy to go yourself? I am tethered to this bar. My domain is merely my tavern. You're much more likely to run into him. Probably not true. He's like guaranteed to come back here. Huh. Fine. Might as well. Guess I owe that leech of thanks for providing me with this strange adventure. Did you have fun? Huh. It was... Fun? Yes, I'll admit it. It was fun. Just wish I could tell my Baba about it. But you make a good stand in and keep. Thank you. I try. Now, any of you know where I can find this vampire? Last saw him at the Gaia Temple. The priest might know where he went. I know where he wanted to go. I heard him over talking about it. Care to share? Hmm. I wanted to trade it. The information, I mean. For what? Can you teach me how to use a greatsword? Melly, you cannot even hold a longsword. That's it? Sure thing. Right now? Is right now okay? Please. Do it outside. You will kill my jackdaw. I've got time. It might take you more than one lesson, though. That's okay. I've also got time. She's got nine lives, so I guess. It's a deal, then. I'll show you the basics, and you can tell me where to find the vampire. Yippee! That is, if your assistant is alright with that. Don't care. Not my circus. Not my monkey. Grr. Okay, kiddo. 
Let's go. And keep, can we use your front yard? Uh, of course, go wild. Just don't kill her. Will do. Are you coming too, Mel? No. I'll stay here and have another drink. Okay, you can join us later. I can't wait to learn how to fight. It'll be so helpful for future adventures. Inky, do you have any quests I could go on after this? To practice my sword and stealth skills? N not yet, but I'm sure something will come up. Be patient. I promise I'll have a quest for you soon. I only have the... What? The investigation quest? Yeah. I can't wait. I'm going to destroy any challenge with wits, stealthiness, and giant swords. Ha! I know you will. But first I gotta practice. See you later. Ah, what a promising character. Ah, makes my heart so warm. All right, Malachite. Wow, I'm seeing more, even more than I've ever seen. Holy shit, this pillar is so three-dimensional. I like her ambition. I like her naivety. Some would call it optimism. A waste of time. Delusions get you nowhere. You would know. Another drink, please. Same as before. Sweet and all. Coming right up. Alright, do I remember how to make this? By heart. Was it two of those? Nah, I fucked it. What was it? Some sweet optimism from my most pessimistic customer. Huh. This is sweet enough to make me optimistic for future drinks. Wow, I'm proud of myself here. You should be. So, Malachite. Just leave me to my pondering. Got it. Oh, he finished it already. Is he gonna stay there? Holy shit. You spent the whole- t Hey, Fable! But you spent the entire day up here. Fable, it feels like it's been forever. Hi, Ainkeep. Hi, Fable. I'm so happy to see this tavern looking healthy again. And you too. I'm sorry it took me so long to check in. That's all right. I hope the last two days weren't too hard on you. No, no, not at all. I was just very busy. A bunch of the Ashen Grove's tree, uh, trees got knocked over. And I spent a lot of time rescuing and leading group therapy sessions with the local wildlife. Okay, <laughs> that's awesome. I would fucking love to hear one of that. One of those, I mean. And of course I had to check in on all the nearby settlements too. See if they needed help with any damage after all of that. Did uh, Uncle Dragon make it? Yes, the werewolf settlement took a bit of a hit, but everyone made it out okay. Mr. Dragon was making emergency soup when I arrived. I think he's a stress cooker. It's very nice of you to check in with everyone, though. I had to make sure everyone was okay. I- oh, I was like, uh, they just said healing slaves. I used up a lot of my healing salves, but that's what they're there for. I'm not happy I had to use them, but... I'm glad I was prepared. May I request something? Go ahead. Do you maybe have a drink in your repertoire that could assist someone in a situation like mine? Your drinks are powerful. I'd like something that would make me stronger, make me tougher while I also replenish my social energy. I think I'm all done with helping out now, but a drink that like that might be a real game changer in case something like this happens again. Hmm, I don't have a recipe for that yet. But don't worry, I've already got an idea. But even without such a drink, I'm sure people were very thankful for your presence. Well, they weren't mad about it, at least. Though, I sort of feel like people really aren't really as concerned as I thought they'd be. When I saw the stars fall, I thought for sure the world was going to end. Yeah, I recall. You are right that it wouldn't, of course. But I thought that people would be a little more freaked out by the lack of a night sky. But everyone just seems to be okay with it? I asked one of my sisters about it and she said, Who cares? Some wide-eyed adventurer will surely put them back at some point. Let's worry about replanting these tomatoes. Fable, you're a real one. You, Alithia... Probably Lynn, um, fucking Melly, you're all real. 
I don't even know if you can put them back. You can never put back what's lost. But you can always replace it with something new. I'm not sure you can replace the stars. Or if you should approach lost that way. <laughs> Good advice, Pable. It's all a matter of perspective. I wouldn't mind a bunch of trees up in the night sky for a change. Right. But it still would be much nicer if some things would just stay the same. They never do. <laughs> Don't cry, Fable. It's just the way of life. I'm just happy everyone is okay. Did you check in on Lin yet? She should be hacking my terrace to pieces outside. I did. Outside. On your definitely not hacked up terrace. Just out of curiosity, do you own any wood glue? <laughs> uh, you know, Fable, wood glue is the strongest glue there is. And any man that knows that will say that to you at any opportunity they get. It was nice to see that she's okay too. I was a little worried she would just leave and never talk to me again. So it was nice watching her train Melly with so much enthusiasm. And to catch up a bit, that too. But she tried to rope me in into their greatsword training. Did you accept? I'm not really a sword kind of elf, but it was fun to watch her teach Melly. She's very sweet, indeed. And I was just relieved to see Carolyn doing right, all right. And she was relieved about Mr. Dragon. And about you, I'm sure. Fable, you probably don't have to worry about her dropping you too much because as long as you keep in touch with her uncle, you'll have like that link to her. That's how I stalk all my friends that drop me. I just, uh, you know, attach myself to their family members. Maybe. To celebrate our well-being despite the absurdity of this world, how about a drink? I would love a drink. Can you give me something agile and swift? I still have to make my way back home later, and I could use some speed for that. I'm sure I'll find just the right thing. Same drink as always. Or, same drink as for the most part. And the thousand wins. That's cool. I'm finally getting all these drinks. Swift and quickly, your favorite drink. Thank you. Your drinks are still the highlight of my day. He makes the best drinks, right? There. Okay. Really? Do you actually think that? Or is this just a thing where you don't want to be nice? People seem to do that a lot for some reason. I, oh, they taste good. As good as things can taste when you're, um, me. Well said, thank you. By the way, I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Fable. I'm, I'm an elf and a ranger. And I come here a lot. I too also introduce myself by my race. They're also an incredibly courageous and capable hero. That's not true. Not yet. I'm working on it. Being a hero, I mean. Why? Because I dream of adventure and all the wonderfully exciting things I can bring. And I want to help people. Why? Are you like fucking stupid, dude? What the fuck? Why not? I'm Malachite. Oh, you're Mal. I mean, Malachite, obviously. Melly was just talking about a Mal. She said they, or I guess you, are very cool and her new friend. She sounded very happy about it. We're not friends. She just won't leave me alone. That's kind of like you and uh, Carolyn, Fable. Oh, okay. Then why do you spend time with her if you don't like her? That sounds really mean. She keeps following me. And you take her along? Not by choice. Hmm. I don't know you well enough to judge the truth behind all this. But I think you should be honest. With her and with yourself. Honesty goes a long way. I also believe that thing in Zofort could be fixed with honesty as well. You mean the missing familiar? I heard several fami familiars are going missing, actually. And I believe that so many mages and familiars present. Someone is bound to know something. 
But maybe they're just scared to face the possible consequences of their honesty. Sounds like Zofred is going through an eventful time. Thank you for letting me know. I'll keep an eye or two for future develop. I'll keep an eye or two out for future developments. Zofred isn't very far from here, is it? Not too far. It's uh, in the eastern Feyosa, and is is, to my knowledge, the biggest harbor town the Republic has to offer. I can only recommend its many summer festivals. Very pretty fireworks. Why? Does it sound like something up your alley? No, not mine, but... Melina is seeking her first quest. Maybe this could be something for her. She needs to practice her skills outside of risk-free therapy. Good idea. I'll see if I can reserve it for her. Sorry for asking, but first quest? I thought Melly just turned 10. Isn't that a bit young for quests? No. I was a similar age when I ventured on my first quest. The one with the horrifying nightmare creatures? I, I feel like I should not say that. It's kind of unprofessional of me to just out him, out his information to strangers. Yes. Oh, that's sad. No, that's cool. I'm fucking sick, dude. Don't even talk to me. I got a teardrop tattoo. No, I think it, that's a little sad. Children shouldn't have to face such danger that early. Why not? It's always there. Might as well confront them with it when they're young, so they accept its existence in their lives. <laughs> that's an insane thing to say. Just because the world can be horrible doesn't mean we should confront children with the fact as early as we can. It's already bad enough that our gr us grown-ups have to deal with it so much. Why should they accept it if we can make the world a better place for them instead? I mean, when you were on a quest with, and I quote, horrifying nightmare creatures, weren't you scared? Wouldn't you have preferred not to be alone? It builds character. A character that thinks we should put other kids in miserable situations? Sure did a lot of good for you there. Damn. Mabel, go off. Weren't your parents worried to death about you? Uh, can't wait to see where this goes. You got enough rumors to make a quest yet, Inkeep? Not yet. Give me another day. People are so busy talking about or ignoring all the star debris, they're losing sight of the important things. Like feeding me new information. There's only one thing that fuels me. Alcohol and money. Is that very nutritious for you? No, but it's fun. In that case, the fun I can provide in this day is running out. Unfortunately, the horrors of this world do not stop chasing me, nor anyone else. I shall take my leave. Good luck. See you around. With less horrors, I hope. Now I'm worried. About Malachite or Melly? Both. Are you really going to send her on that quest? If she wants to go. But I don't think you have to worry about it that much. Yeah, I have kind of just been aiding in this. Like, I realistically should stop her. But I don't think I will be able to anyway. Zofort is a beautiful city with a very low crime rate. I think she can handle a couple of rowdy familiars. And I doubt she'll be going alone, wink wink. I hope not. It's a little worse than being alone when you're scared. Very true. Are you scared of anything? Hmm. Bad Yelp review. I don't think you have to be scared of that. You make the best drinks in all of Asteria. I think as long as you like my drinks, I'll be okay. You've got my five stars in the bag. I would ask you what you're afraid of, but the answer would be everything. I is it? Yes, but I'm working on not letting my fear stop me. I might not be able to avoid feeling afraid, but I can always just do things when I'm scared. Rather than not at all. Maybe. That's still a terrifying thought. How do you handle situations you're afraid of? Hmm. 
I used to have a terrible habit of just walking away from things that scared me, but uh, with the right people by your side, staying becomes less of a crushing weight on your shoulders. You realize that even if things aren't perfectly comfortable, they are still worth experiencing. Me personally, I ain't scared of shit. I, I watch down everything. You can put a gun to my face and I won't be scared. Test me. Some psycho fan, come test me. I dare you. Cut this out. Don't let someone... I'm not going to challenge anyone. That sounds lovely. I've never seen friends of yours around the tavern before. Maybe you should invite them over for some time. Perhaps, though, one of my friends is sitting here right now. Where? Wait, are they invisible? Oh, you mean me. That's... That makes me really happy. Also makes me feel pretty bad about having to go back home. Don't worry, go home. Fix the many things that worry you. As long as you come back. It is late at night, so... Always. I'll see you tomorrow and keep... See you tomorrow, my friend. Alright, good day, good day. You know, I've, you've probably noticed that I stutter a little and honestly, I probably have some kind of undiagnosed mild di dyslexia. I try my best to cut a lot of it out and I'm hoping that doing more out loud reading will help that. It's weird though because I DM for Dungeons and Dragons and I always thought that might help, but I still stutter. Anyway, hopefully by the end of this series, I've gotten some good enough practice and I might start speaking better. That was a good take though. Like and subscribe.